Hey gang, Rod here at East Coast Lumberjack and today I want to talk a little bit more about axe handles and basically troubleshooting an axe handle. Um, I've got asked a lot of questions over the years. I'm going to cover some of the highlights. All right, I've, uh, I've got two orders out here in the bench that I'm wrapping right now to send out to customers. One's going to Alaska, the other one's going to Georgia. So these, these babies are going in a, two different directions in quite a ways in, in each direction. However, what I do now, one of these orders is for a college in Georgia. There, it's a, a college, uh, a collegiate lumberjack team, and they wanted some uh, Aussie style handles in hickory. So I, I've made up three of them. Now they wanted them 28, 29 and a half, and 31 inches. So what I've done now, I've got a pattern. And what I've done, if you look at them here, you can see them all laying here side by side. These are those three axes right here. Okay, so one, two, three, they're all hick uh, hickory handles. And you can see they're a little bit long. One's, of course, a little bit longer than the next one. The other one's a little bit longer than the next one because they wanted, uh, they wanted those different lengths. So if we measure them, uh, this one here, 24, 28, 29, 30, 31. So this one's 31 inches, this long one. <clears throat> Let me put them all here this way. So what I do a lot of times for as far as length goes is I'll give you a long eye. So if your eye measurement, and usually what I'm all after is your the length of the eye and the width of the eye, not the height. Okay, so I want the length length of the eye this way, width of the eye this way, and then this here's the height, okay? This is, this is how high your axe eye is. Now usually what I do, if you see here, this is the axe eye. You can see here that to the shoulder, there's actually about, there's almost six inches here. Okay, so what, what I've been doing lately is I leave a little bit extra at the top. So if you measure your handle from bottom to top, You'll see that, uh, and actually on this one here, it is 31 inches, which is what they asked for. But basically, you could move that axe head, which is four inches, down here another inch or almost two inches, and shorten this 31 inch handle to a 30 inch or 29 inch very easily. If you want the full length of your axe handle, if you want it to be 31 inches, when I send this down to these guys, if they're going to mount it up here, what you do then is you come back here and you actually move your shoulder of your axe handle up towards towards the end of the handle the uh, end of the butt of the uh, the axe head so this will slope down here so they're going to remove this bit of wood in here okay so that's a really easy way and i usually send most of my handles a little bit proud so if you want the extra length you can do it easily mount your axe head up high take this out and i do it before you put the axe head on Okay, so you just move that shoulder up a little bit and you can lengthen your handle very easily. To shorten it, all you can do is go back. You can only shorten it to where the uh, shoulder is. So basically with this one here, this shoulder is set for a 29 inch handle. So they could shorten this by almost an inch and a half. But likely they will use it for the full 31. So that's a good way. You can either lengthen or shorten an axe handle that you get from East Coast Lumberjack. Now not all handles come with a, a lot of uh, spare room up top here so that will limit how much you can do that but you can move that around a little bit okay so that's the first thing shortening and lengthening the handle the next thing is the width and the thickness I'm six foot tall I'm almost 200 pounds and I make these I do have a relatively large hand for a guy my size so what I do is I make the handle to fit my hands nice and, and <laughs> these axe handles are beauties um, so this fits my hand nicely now if you're a smaller person and it feels a little bit big in your hands. Grab your rasp, grab your spoke shave, grab whatever, and take it off where you want it off. If you want it a little bit more narrower, then take it off the whole way along. It's wood, and you can work it. So you can make it a little bit more narrower, a little bit less thick if you want. <clears throat> and of course, I'm gonna send it a little bit on the larger side because you can always take wood off, but you cannot put wood on, okay? And that leads me to the next point, and that's the eye dimensions. When you give the East Coast Lumberjack your eye dimensions, I'm taking those because I want to know 
what the minimum is I need to leave you. Now, I will say, depending on where I'm selling these axe handles, uh, you get a lot of different receptions. Most guys that know something about axes and, and hafting axes, uh, they want the room to play with up here. And the reason for that is if you go to some of my earlier videos on how to hang an axe, you'll see that you're going to fit that on and you're going to keep moving it around to make sure your blade is in line with your handle. And you're, you're going to take a little bit off in some places and not so much on others so that the axe head fits on here straight. And that the toe and the heel and this part all line up. Okay? So, in order to do that, you need a little bit of wood up here to play with. Again, you can always take wood off. You cannot put wood on up here. So if I send you now, the, the wedge will take up some slack. So if, if you've told me you need three quarters of an inch and I send you three quarters of an inch on the money and you have to take some off, or if it's even a little bit smaller, don't sweat it. I, you, they're, they're usually a little bit wider down here. And once you put them on, it'll fit nice and snug. Okay, so the wedge will take up the slop in the top. So a lot of times that width isn't quite as, as uh, important as the length of the eye. And although then again, you can also take up some of that length. If your eye comes to a nice sharp point out here, when you wedge that, the wedge will take up that slack in the front as well. So, but usually I always oversize your eyes. I've had guys call and say, what are you doing? I gave you my eye measurements. The eye you sent me is too big. <laughs> Correct. It's always going to be. And I'm a nice guy for doing that. If I leave you with not enough wood, the handle is no good. Okay? Your money that you spent is useless because the, the axe head is too big for the eye. So that's why I always ask for measurements. I'm not going to shape this. And they shouldn't shape this. What, and, and most guys that have gone in to buy handles know that. You pick up a handle in the store and it's already shaped down a little bit. If it's too slack, uh, sloppy in your, in your eye of your axe, it's useless. So I don't take anything off up here because I don't know the shape of your eye. Some eyes from old, older axes, vintage axes, they're not square. They're not, they're not uh, uniform. So it's a lot smarter to leave the guy a lot of, a lot of uh, wood up here to shape it himself. So, that's the second thing. Now, the third thing. I'm known for my, for my flares on my handles and also for the straightness of both grain and the axe themselves. However, sometimes these things are going, like this one here, these, uh, the two ash I have that are going to Alaska are going to be packed up tight on a plane. Who knows where they're going to be stuck. And if they are sitting somewhere for any length of time, it might bend the handle. Now, I've told this uh, to people before. Um, hickory and ash, you can bend the handle. So if you if you get a handle, and again, the ones in the stores might be a little bit different, but my handles, when you look down them, if you have a little, now this one's straight to die, so, um, and they all will be, so there won't be anything here I can actually talk to you about, because these are all, I look down them, that's the last thing I do before I finish them and send them out, but they're all straight to die. However, if, if there was a little bit of a sweep, now, Another thing, when you're looking down my handles when you get them, East Coast Lumberjack handles, sometimes it looks like things are off a little bit. And that might be because I don't finish the eye. So because I don't finish it, and sometimes I don't get the, I don't get the curve perfect. Okay, sometimes it's off a little bit. Maybe it's, you know, even from top to bottom, it might be sitting a little bit uh, sideways. I fixed most of that now, but sometimes it is. Now, that is going to be buried in your eye of the axe and it's going to be wedged and it really in all honesty it doesn't matter much unless you're real anal about having that you know and some guys do gorgeous jobs when they finish these and, and i'm all for that that's the way i like to have mine done as well but on my, some of my older axes if, if the eye's not perfectly straight the kerf isn't it's not a big deal to me okay i'm just going to wedge it and go out and beat around with it my competition axes i like them to look good <laughs> and then of course if it's a wall hanger or something beautiful like that, you're putting a colored wedge in, then yeah, you want that kerf nice and straight. So if you want to do the kerf yourself, just say so. Say, Rod, leave the kerf. And a couple of guys have done that in the past. Say, Rod, leave the kerf. I'll do it myself. Um, so anyways, that's a little bit on that. Now, as far as getting back to the bending, if, if your handle's not perfectly straight, so sometimes it may look at because, and this one here, actually, if you look at this one here a little bit, it looks at right here just a little bit because I've left a little bit more here than I have here 
on the bandsaw. But when I go, to, when he goes to put the axe head on that, he's going to take that off. So if you're looking down, it looks like, oh, it bumps in on this one here up by the eye. Don't sweat it because I've left more wood on up here for a reason. Okay, and you're going to shape that to make it straight with the handle. But if there is a bend in the handle, you can put it in the vise underneath the vise like I do and you can pry on that and bend it okay make sure you bend it where the bend is okay so if the bend is here you want to shove the handle under so much enough that you're putting the pressure on to bend right where the bend is in the wood if you don't you can actually cause a lot of wobbles in your wood so that's the biggest thing bend it where it's bent and you can uh, bend it back and it will stay there all right and sometimes that happens in shipment uh, other things, sometimes, now usually it doesn't happen that much, but sometimes you'll get a high spot. And when I run my hands along my handles before I send them out, my number ones, usually they're pretty straight, but sometimes, like, there's a little, a little bit of a bump here on this one. Okay, now if that bothers a person, I, I haven't sanded it yet, so of course, and of course I don't. Most people don't want them sanded. They want to check them out and maybe smooth that up a little bit themselves. You can do that. Okay, so that's, that's perfectly legitimate. <laughs> Um, so that's a bunch of things to troubleshoot an axe handle. Um, I always send wedges with my axes, and usually they're usually they're ash. Now these ones here are hickory because they're going down to the states for these three hickory handles for that college team. So uh, now I've cut those out, and they were straight as a die this morning. This one here's got a little bit of wop in it, but of course it's a wedge. It's not the end of the world at all, and that's what happens when you thin out that hickory a bit. Um, but my, the way I cut mine out, I leave ridges lengthwise, which is good because it acts as friction to keep the wedge from popping out. One other thing I will say about uh, hanging an axe, hang it uh, with the wedge, use a wooden wedge every time, and do not glue it. Okay, do not glue it. Because what will happen is, if, unless your axe is in the same moisture content all the time, which is impossible if you're outside. All right, if you're using your tool outside, which you will be, it's going to take on the moisture content of whatever the air is around it. So that increase and decrease in size because of the taking on and off moisture is going to cause things to get loose. If you've glued your wedge, you cannot then pound it in a little bit farther. Okay, it's almost impossible to do. So that's why I always say don't, uh, don't grease your wedges and also don't glue your wedges. Okay, I think both are bad. If you do it right, just wood on wood's gonna hold it really well. And then if you do, if it does get loose on you, you can always pound that wedge a little bit more. Or if it gets really loose, pop it out, put a new one in. That's the best time to, to re-wedge is, is when it gets really loose. Okay, so that's a few tips on axes, troubleshooting handles, um, things that you can do to, to improvise a little bit, make them a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, smoothen them up, make them a little bit better the way you want them um, from the East Coast Lumberjack. Uh, join us again next week. We're going to have all kinds of more information coming right at you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Thanks a lot, gang.